Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. Today, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg visiting the site of the Ohio train derailment for the first time. That's nearly three weeks after the crash. And the National Transportation Secretary Board releasing its first findings on the derailment this morning. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg today praising residents of East Palestine for their resiliency. Some of the locals have complained about experiencing nausea, vomiting, rashes, and burning sensations. That's after the local government opted for a controlled burn of chemicals that spilled during the train derailment. Buttigieg today proposing a plan to prevent accidents like this one from happening in the future. The plan would involve the implementation of new inspection technologies, among other precautions, and safer tank cars. When you see the twisted metal there, you realize the difference between a fortified tank car and some of the tank cars that don't have that level of fortification. Buttigieg did not publicly address the incident until 10 days after the fact. He was asked whether he could have weighed in sooner. The answer to your question is yes. I felt strongly about this and uh, could have expressed that sooner. Again, I was taking pains to respect the, the role that I have and the role that I don't have, but that should not have stopped me from weighing in about how I felt about what was happening to this community. Earlier today, the National Transportation Security Board issued an initial report on the derailment. The report suggesting that blame for the accident lies in a wheel bearing that severely overheated before the train went off the rails. It was the combination of the hot axle and the plastic pellets which started the initial fire. The crew operating the freight train apparently didn't receive a critical warning about the overheated axle until moments before the derailment. The report is preliminary and subject to change as investigators deepen their probe. At a White House briefing earlier today, the press secretary defended President Biden against critics who point out that Biden went to Ukraine and other European countries, but not yet East Palestine. The press secretary says Biden took action by coordinating various agencies who did respond to East Palestine. While he was in Poland, he spoke to uh, the important folks on the ground, the leaders, the leadership on the ground, including uh, the, his leadership in those, uh, in those uh, respective agencies. She added that the federal government will hold Norfolk Southern accountable for the derailment. And the House Judiciary Committee today taking their border hearing to the front lines. Congressional lawmakers led by Chairman Jim Jordan in Yuma, Arizona today, where apprehensions of illegal immigrants have surged from 40 to over 1,000 per day. And the local hospitals facing mounting financial pressure. NTD is on the ground in Yuma. Here's the story. Lawmakers attempting to bring D.C. to the border crisis. According to Border Patrol agents, last night there were over 200 folks who crossed the border last night. Uh, we, got to see, we got to see the unfinished wall. Ahead of Thursday's hearing, meeting with leaders at the city's only hospital, which faces a unique challenge in caring for large amounts of people, roughly 300,000 people. That's triple the size of the city's entire population. Migrant patients are receiving free care. They have no ability to pay. We have no ability to bill anyone. We don't know their final destination. We don't know anything about them. We cannot provide completely free care to the residents of our community. So the situation is simply not fair and understandably concerning to them. The hospital now dealing with financial woes after spending around $26 million caring for illegal immigrants, mainly pregnant women with nobody to foot the bill. Isn't there some rule that says you can't send a child away from the hospital without a car seat? Correct. CMS rule, we cannot do that. So we're buying all the car seats as we send them on the way and paying for all the health care and you're $26 million in debt, basically. Correct. On Wednesday night, the congressional delegation took a tour of the border. Today, they heard from local witnesses, including Yuma Sheriff and County Supervisor. Only half of the House Judiciary Committee are here in Yuma for this on-site hearing. All Democrats on Judiciary boycotted it, calling it political theater. Democrat Ranking Member Jerry Nadler and Progressive Caucus Chairwoman Pramilia Jayapal said in a joint statement, instead of focusing on real solutions to a complicated problem, Judiciary Republicans will once again not hear from any federal government witnesses at their hearing, further cementing this hearing as a brazen act of political grandstanding. Democrats dismiss the experiences of these real people that we've had a chance to visit with the last 24 hours, people affected by the Biden border crisis, and Democrats seem to believe that solutions can only come from bureaucrats in Washington. We actually think they come from the American people. 
Democrat leader Hakeem Jeffries was in Laredo, Texas last week, a day after McCarthy's border trip. The Democrats say they plan to take their own trip to the border next month. The hearing in Yuma comes as some in the GOP push to impeach DHS Secretary Mayorkas. For you. Has Secretary Mayorkas ever lied to you? Yes. <laughs> and what was the substance of that lie? To specifically address, quote unquote, nine of the 11 Yuma gaps. And, and how many of those gaps have been addressed? To date so far, none. Chairman Jordan and Speaker McCarthy have so far refrained from laying out plans for an official impeachment trial. Melina Weiskup, NTD News. The United States has publicly warned China against sending weapons to Russia. And the administration is now reportedly going to publish evidence of China considering just that. And today's Iris Tao brings us the latest from the White House. U.S. officials telling the Wall Street Journal that a Biden administration could release intelligence that China is now considering sending weapons to Russia. The discussions on public disclosure, the report says, comes ahead of the war's one-year anniversary on Friday. And it follows a number of closed-door appeals to Beijing, which culminated in a formal warning by the Secretary of State this past weekend. China is considering uh, uh, supporting Russia's war effort in Ukraine with lethal assistance. And now NATO is also sounding the alarm, saying on Thursday. We haven't seen uh, any uh, supplies of uh, lethal aid from China to Russia, uh, but we have seen signs that they are considering uh, and may be planning for that. But the White House is not telling us when it's going to publish evidence of China considering that or if the administration has any at all. But they haven't said it's off the table. Uh, but again, we haven't seen it happen at this time. We, ha we haven't seen them provide the support. Uh, but again, uh, you know, we're going to continue monitoring this and, uh, and, you know, and speak out when needed. Meanwhile, Biden is meeting virtually with G7 leaders and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky on Friday. The White House says it will announce new sanctions against those aiding Russia's war effort. But the press secretary still wouldn't name China on Thursday as a potential target. Does that include China, Chinese companies? I'm just not going to get ahead of any announcement that's right. going to happen so tomorrow. That said, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen went public on Thursday with her warning to China. We have made clear that providing material support to Russia would be a very serious concern to us. The potential sanctions come after Russian President Vladimir Putin hosted a top Beijing diplomat at the Kremlin on Thursday. And as he confirmed, the Chinese Communist leader Xi Jinping would visit Moscow in the coming months. Reporting from the White House, Aris Tao, NTD News. Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy defending giving Fox's Tucker Carlson footage from the January 6th Capitol breach. McCarthy telling the New York Times that he promised to release the tapes because he says they, quote, do belong to the American public. McCarthy has released 40,000 plus hours of footage to Carlson, meaning the show host now has access to more materials than the House panel did during the investigation last Congress. Carlson's team is reviewing the footage, which could air in the coming weeks. The release from Speaker McCarthy comes after calls for transparency from members, including Congressman Matt Gates. When asked about his plans to release the footage last month, here's what McCarthy told reporters. I think the American public should actually see all what happened instead of a report that's written for a political basis. Democrats, however, condemning this act as a breach of security. Senate Leader Chuck Schumer writing a dear colleague letter saying the speaker is needlessly exposing the Capitol complex to one of the worst security risks since 9-11. Democrats also accusing McCarthy of handpicking Fox, saying that shows political bias. However, Republicans say last Congress's investigation was biased in and of itself, since only two Republicans sat on the select committee, both of whom held bias toward former President Trump. This comes as the DOJ's special counsel had subpoenaed former President Trump's daughter Ivanka and son-in-law Jared Kushner. The two will have to testify before a federal grand jury about Trump's connection with January 6th. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.